the vulva. And on the vulva, that's going to consist of the mons pubis, or the fat pad, or pooch, or whatever you guys want to call it. Mons pooch. pubis. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to have the labium major, labium minor, the clitoris. The clitoris is erectile tissue. On top of that, we'd also have the prepuce. And this guy doesn't show it, but we would have vestibular glands. What was that one? Prep? The prepuce is skin, foreskin. Okay. There'd be skin on top of the clitoris. There would be a little opening here called vestibular glands. They're the same as the bulbar urethral gland in men. It's ejaculatory gland. Now, the actual openings to the inside of her body, there's a special name. We call that the vestibule. So in the vestibule, it's just the, both labias and the two openings, one for the urethra, the urethral opening, or the urethral orifice, and the vaginal orifice. So this organ right here, this is the urethra. In women, it's roughly three inches long. Then we're gonna have the bladder. The muscle lining the bladder is the detressor muscle. We can't see the trigone too well, so I'm not gonna ask that. Going back posterior to the urethra, we're gonna have the vaginal canal. In the vaginal canal, we're gonna have these vaginal folds, also called rugae. The vaginal canal is gonna lead back superiorly into the cervix. And the cervix, we're gonna have these creases surrounding the cervix completely, that's called the fornix. Depending on where you're looking at it, in this mid sagittal section, we call this the anterior fornix, posterior fornix, but we also have lateral fornixes. The opening to the cervix, we don't call it an orifice because it's not a direct opening to the outside of the body, but we have another name for it, we call it os. So this will be the external cervical os, then cervical canal, and then internal cervical os. The internal cervical loss is roughly right where the little folds end. And then the internal will lead into the uterus. So this whole organ is the uterus. These are linings of tissue. So the innermost lining would be the endometrium. The middle layer would be myometrium. And the outer layer would be perimetrium. As we follow back towards the ovary, we're going to go to this organ right here. This is the fallopian tube, or we can also call it uterine tube. And the uterine tube will attach to this organ right here. This is the ovary. Okay. The first region of the uterine tube, the finger-like structures, we call that the fimbrae. Uh, behind the fimbrae, we're going to have the little ampulla. And then going down into the actual tube, this will be the isthmus. This is the part that's only like a hair, a size of hair in diameter. Um, the rest of the things we should know are the ligaments. So make the infundibulum is the like, the little neck behind the fimbrae. So a lot of people don't count them. I'm not sure if in your anatomy book it has the infundibulum, but it'd be fimbrae, infundibulum, and then the ampulla. It's just a really thin region. The broad ligament is going to form the floor of the uterus. Then we're going to have the round ligament, just like in the liver. It's actually round. Call that the round ligament. Attaching the ovary to the uterus would be the ovarian ligament. Suspending the ovary to the wall, we call that the suspensory ligament. And attaching the uterus to the sacrum, we call that the uterosacral ligament. And that's pretty much it. Again, you guys know the rectum, the anal canal, the involuntary smooth muscle, the voluntary skeletal muscle, which is called the levator ani. Um, that's it. Does that form the external anal sphincter? Yeah, the external anal sphincter skeletal muscle and then the internal anal sphincter smooth muscle. And which one is the ovarian ligament? This guy right here. Attaching the ovary to the uterus. And, and we have to know what that is. This is the bone, this is the pubic symphysis. I don't know if you guys remember that from the bone chapter. Is that the mons pubis then? Uh-huh. The mons pubis is the surface area. This is where also the uh, like the pubic hairs would be found. Yeah. And it's uh, adipose tissue right here. Is that really mainly this with women, not with guys? Guys don't have a mons pubis. Yeah, we do have an, we do have like the pub. Everyone has like that pubic triangle, where also the pubic hairs are found. But on men, it's not called mons pubis. Mm -hmm.